Hello students, welcome back to your English class. So today we will start a new chapter from your literature reader that is chapter number 6 Aladdin and the Magic Lamp written by Anthony Gallant. So before starting the chapter, let us know something about the author Anthony Gallant. Anthony Gallant was born on 4th April 1646 at Rollot, France and he died on February 1715 in Paris, France. He was a French orientalist and archaeologist who gained wide acclaim as the first European to translate 1001 nights. He titled it he titled it Les Mele et Anne Nuits. His version of the tales appeared in 12 volumes between 1704 and 1717 and exerted a significant influence on subsequent European literature. So it in exerted a great influence on European literature and attitudes to the Islamic world. George Lewis Borges has suggested that Romanticism began when his translation was first read. So, Romanticism began with his translation when it was first read. So, now let's come to the chapter Aladdin and the Magic Lamp by Anthony Gallant. A long time ago in China, there lived a poor boy whose name was Aladdin. Aladdin lived with his mother. So, Aladdin lived with his mother. He was quite poor. One day, a rich and distinguished looking man came to their house and said to Aladdin's mother. So, one day, a very distinguished, good looking man came to their house and told Aladdin's mother that I am a merchant, that he was a merchant from Arabia, that is, that he has come all the way from Arabia and wanted her son to come with him. Now, this lady was a bit curious as to why. I will reward him handsomely. So, he told that he will reward the boy handsomely, that is, give him a lot of money okay or anything or uh, in large amount aladdin's mother instantly agreed because they were poor so they needed money or wealth so she instantly agreed to it agreed to the proposal then little uh, did she know that the man pretending to be a rich merchant was in reality a magician so Aladdin's mother did not know that actually in reality the merchant was a magician. She, he was just posing to be a very good merchant but actually he was a magician. Next day Aladdin having packed to his belongings he left with the merchant. So Aladdin left with the merchant. After many hours of traveling the merchant stopped. So Aladdin did not know where he had to go. So when the merchant stopped, Aladdin also stopped. After many hours of traveling, the merchant stopped. Aladdin too stopped, surprised that they should stop in such a desolate spot. What is a desolate spot? A desolate spot is a place where nobody stays. So it is empty, vacant. He looked around. There was nothing in sight for miles. So the entire place was vacant. The merchant pulled out some colored powder from his pocket. Now he was a magician so he had colored powder in his pocket. Various other things magicians do have and he threw it on the ground. So he threw the colored powder on the ground. Now what happened after that? The next instant the whole place was filled with smoke. So the whole place it was it became smoky as the smoke cleared aladdin saw a huge opening in the ground so after the smoke cleared aladdin could see a huge opening on the ground so which was not there before it was a cave so it was a hidden cave and by magic the magician just sprinkled something and the cave was visible the merchant turned to Aladdin and said, 
I want you to go inside this cave. There will be more gold than you have ever seen. So the merchant said that you will see plenty of gold inside. You can take as much as you can and take as much as you want. So he gave uh, Aladdin the opportunity that he can take as much gold as he wants. But in return, he has to do one thing. What is that? You will also see an old lamp there. Please bring that back to me. So the merchant didn't want any gold or money or anything as such, which was more precious than the lamp. But he wanted that old lamp from Aladdin. Here, take this ring. It will help you. So the merchant or the magician gave Aladdin a ring that this ring will help you in dire need. So when if he falls in some trouble, this ring will help him. Aladdin was very suspicious. Now, Aladdin was very doubtful. Like why this man is telling me to get inside? Why he doesn't want the wealth, only the old lamp? All these questions were coming into his mind. He was becoming very inquisitive. But he decided to do as he was told. But he finally decided that, okay, what the merchant will say, he will do that. He lowered himself into the cave. Now slowly he lowered himself into the cave and thinking all the while that it would be difficult to climb out without help. He knew that going in was easy but while coming up it will be difficult for him. He would need some help, someone's help rather. Aladdin entered the cave and just like the merchant had said, saw gold, jewelry, diamonds and other valuable. So everything which was valuable, precious was there. There was plenty of all the riches. But what the merchant wanted? That old lamp. He filled his pockets. So he filled his pocket as much as he could with the gold and the jewelries and the wealth which was there. When this was done, he looked for the lamp. The next thing, what did he do? He looked for the old lamp. It was lying in the corner. So it was lying in one side, in one corner of the cave, full of dust and dirt. Okay. He picked it up and ran to the cave's opening and shouted to the merchant. So he picked up the lamp and then he shouted to the merchant, I have your lamp. Can you please pull me out? So he told the merchant that I have got your lamp. So please pull me out so that I can give it to you. I have your lamp. Can you please pull me out? Give me the lamp, said the merchant. So the merchant first said that give me the lamp or give the lamp to me. Then I will pull you out. Aladdin was not sure that he would be pulled out of if he gave back the lamp. So Aladdin was skeptical that whether the man or the magician will pull him out after he gives the lamp back. So, out of doubt, he said he will not give the lamp first. So, he said, first, please pull me out. This angered the merchant. With a loud cry, he pulled out the same colorful powder and threw it on the cave opening. So, he was very angry that the boy was not listening to him. So he again took out that colored powder and threw it on the opening of the cave. And instantly what happened? Uh, sealing it with a huge boulder. And instantly the mouth of the cave was sealed with a big boulder or a big stone. Aladdin was depressed. So Aladdin was trapped inside. He was depressed. He was feeling very much like he didn't know what to do. Okay, he was afraid of what will happen next. He thought that, uh, was no, that was no rich merchant. Now he understood that, that the person who was outside was not a rich merchant. He was surely a magician because only a magician can do such tricks. I wonder why this lamp was so important to him. So now Aladdin was wondering that why this lamp was so important to him that he was craving it for it. As he was thinking, he rubbed the lamp. So Aladdin out of just, he just rubbed the lamp. Okay. All of a sudden, 
a strange mist filled the room and from the mist emerged a stranger looking man so when he rubbed the lamp a strange mist came out and the there was a strange looking man huge big he said my master i am the genie of the lamp you have rescued me what would your wish be so you have rescued me now what would your wish be now i will fulfill your wish because you have brought me out of the lamp so now tell me master what is your wish aladdin was at first very scared he was very much afraid seeing that huge gigantic man out there but he said in a quivering voice take me back home so he just could say that take me back home please and the next moment aladdin was home hugging his mother and the very next moment he was by the side of his mother hugging her he told her of the magician and the lamp aladdin again summoned the genie aladdin now again called the genie from the lamp this time when the genie appeared he was not scared now he understood that if i rub the lamp the genie will come out and fulfill my wishes so now he was not afraid slowly slowly he was gaining the confidence this time when the genie appeared he was not scared he said genie i want a palace not an old hut and within seconds what happened again to aladdin and his mother's amazement in front of them was a magnificent palace a gigantic big impressive palace before them time passed aladdin married the sultan's daughter so he had become rich and finally aladdin married sultan's daughter and was very happy it so happened that the evil magician got to know of aladdin's good fortune now it so happened that the evil magician came to know that aladdin had become very much fortunate so now he was quite jealous of it because he wanted the lamp which was now with aladdin he came by aladdin's palace pretending to exchange old lamps for new so he came to aladdin's palace pretending to exchange old lamps with new now here aladdin's wife she didn't know about the lamp and the magic behind it the princess aladdin's wife not knowing the value of the lamp to aladdin called out to the magician to wait now she called out to the magician to wait so why not exchange the an old lamp with a new then it will be new so she was of this mind but she didn't know the value of the lamp she didn't know that how much precious the lamp was for aladdin as soon as the magician saw the lamp he grabbed it he just snatched it and grabbed it from the princess's hand and rubbed it and as soon as he got the lamp he rubbed the lamp the genie appeared you are my master and your wish is my command obviously this is known that whoever has the lamp he is the master of the lamp now since the magician was having the lamp so he was the master of genie so now he will full genie will fulfill the magician's wish so he said to the magician take aladdin's palace to the great desert far away from here so take this palace to the great desert and leave it there ordered the magician when aladdin came home there was no palace and no princess he guessed it must be the evil magician who had come to take revenge on him now he neither found the palace not the princess so now he knew that obviously this was a trick made by the magician he had come to his place and he has done it so he had done all these things out of revenge or he had vengeance within him for which he did this all was not lost aladdin had a ring that the magician had given to him now aladdin was thinking how to get out of that situation suddenly he remembered that he had the magic ring which the magician gave it to him aladdin pulled out the ring rubbed it another genie appeared aladdin said take me to my princess so aladdin said to the genie that please take me to my princess where my princess is soon aladdin was in arabia with his princess he found his lamp lying on a table now he found the lamp lying on a table next to the magician the magician was also there before the magician could react 
or do something, Aladdin jumped for the lamp and got hold of it. So Aladdin got hold of the lamp. Now, as soon as he had the lamp, Aladdin rubbed it. Now, as soon as Aladdin had the lamp, he rubbed the lamp again. And again the genie came out. The genie appeared again and said, My master Aladdin, it is indeed good to serve you again. That is, I am very much happy to serve you again. Please tell me what I have to do. What is it that you wish? So what is the thing that you wish now? I want you to send this magician to another world so that he never harms anybody. So I want that you send this magician to a different world where he can't hurt anyone. So that he cannot hurt anyone. Said Aladdin, Aladdin's wish was carried out. The evil magician disappeared forever. So now the evil magician was taken and left to a different world, in a different world. And the wish of Aladdin was fulfilled. The genie carried Aladdin, the princess and the palace back to China where it was originally there, situated. He stayed with Aladdin for the rest of his life. So the genie stayed with Aladdin for the rest of his life. So, students, it is a very interesting and a sweet story which we read today. I have given you a detailed explanation of the story. Hope you like the story. Go through the, go through the story twice or thrice and understand the meaning of the story. Okay? So, again, we will meet in the next class. Till then, goodbye everyone and stay safe.